So here we are on the maiden voyage of our vodcast. Paul, why are you laughing already? It's good that we <laughs> yeah. can have fun, right? It's good. Yeah. So this is, in it all is honesty, good. this is the maiden voyage yes, it of is. my vodcast. Yes. Podcast that I want to do and I want to bring people on, but we are in the throes of something pretty mm. significant right now. Huge. I mean, we're talking global pandemic yeah. right in the throes of COVID-19. And so I brought in Paul. Mm. And he's going to talk just about some of the spiritual, relational, sociological implications of all of our physical distancing and things like that. But before we jump into that, who are you, Paul? Paul Maver George of Link Care Counseling Center. Yeah, I think the the big thing for me, right, always is obviously his family, right? Yeah. And and you know, sometimes when you hear that answer, big, oh yeah, I'm like, but yeah. Right. And I think now more than ever. Yeah. Right. Like we everything for all of us. Right. Like how much family matters. Ooh, right. We're spending a lot of time with. Them. Right. And, and for the moment, our, our, we, we've done OK now. I'm a little uneasy. Right. Because I thought, like, <laughs> once I say that, right, that probably means Julie and I'll have a fight. And then where can I go? Like, right. I can't leave. I can't call somebody and you say, hey, can I crash on your couch? Right. 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 You know, I'll be sleeping in my backyard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which would work, right? Yeah, I can make right. that work. Physical distancing. That's it. Physical distancing. Fully, fully, and the weather's a little nicer, right? It is. So yes. I'm the husband of Julie. Okay. Um, and Julie actually is a byproduct of this very church. Oh, okay. um, She grew up here as a kid. Okay. Um, her parents are Ray and Mary Lou Steele. All right. Um, and she actually got saved in the Beeries. And she told me to make sure it's the Beeries Say backyard, right. not okay. Barry. Not Barry. I got a corrective thing. Okay. Right? Uh, during a kids' ministry over summer, oh, that's um, accepted Jesus Christ, and then grew up here. And this is really where she got the foundation of her faith, okay. um, which was huge. I mean, Julie, and I, and I say it a lot, probably more than any human being has shaped the man of God that I am, oh. like being with her, right? Yeah. Like when I, yep. when I, I, you know, I, I got sober, and then I started following Christ, and, and then I met her probably about four years after that. Yep. And I was seeking um, but I, I was dating girls that wouldn't let me fully love the Lord. And yep. like the first thing, when I met her, she was radical for Jesus. That's awesome. And let me love Jesus That's as much awesome. as I wanted to love Jesus. Right. And what was the uh, month, the date, the time of your first date? When was so that? So I can that? tell you that, dude, February 15th. February wow. 15th. No, so now here's the deal. Should we I just put get you dirty? On the spot. Should we get dirty? Like, okay, so here's the story. Okay. okay. So there was some outreach stuff going on out at Fresno State. Okay. Um, so we were ministering and praying with people. We met, right? And oh, you know, kind of mm-hmm. fell for her a bit, you. right? And I wasn't wanting to to date because that had been a stumbling block for me, right? right? And and so I was really trying to be like a Christ follower. We ended up hanging out on February 13th okay. at Denny's till really, really late All right. with this guy that kept saying, man, there's something between you two. So I said, because the next day is the 14th, I'm like... Hey, what are you like doing? Like, we should go out tomorrow night. Yeah. Like, let's, let's go out. And, and she, you told the guy who made the right. observation, you can leave You now. can leave, right. And so she said, well, she had a date. Okay. And I'm all, well, break the date. <laughs> like, go out with me, right? Like, I'm chubby and fat now, but, dude, I was lean and good looking, <laughs> man. I was Gosh. a lean and good looking dude. Right. And I'm like, no, like. For real, like break the date, go out with me. And like, she, you know, she's like, well, no, I can't do it. I'm like, yeah, you can. Okay. And then she told me the guy, I'm like, no, look at me. So I'm Paul's powers looking. of persuasion. Did not work. Oh, oh they didn't. Did not work. She okay. said, no, I gave my word. Oh. And so our first date it's not where was actually on was February 15th. Okay. And so and so that's that's where we celebrate. A year that's later, nice. I asked her to marry me on that on February fifteenth. So hey, that's that's our day, that's right? And kids. And and so we have two boys, Jordan and Jeremiah. Okay. Um, Jordan is twenty three. Okay. And he is married to an amazing young lady. He got married at the beginning of last year, Bree. Uh, and Bree is actually a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Wow. And so they wow. are back currently in Biloxi, Mississippi. And what does she do in the Air Force? So she does cybersecurity. So, yeah, so she's going to be one of these folks that's going to be part of teams that are keeping us safe, right? Like from oh, that's from, you know, from software COVID, yeah. right? Okay. Right from the stuff that they can crash everything, right? Yeah. So she and the team that she's part of are going to do amazing things. She's a yeah, brilliant young lady. That's um, neat. And that's so they're neat. back in Biloxi. And you got a boy who's here? 22, Jeremiah. Okay. Yeah, and Jeremiah is a student at Liberty uh, University, and he's doing an internship at the well. All he right. wants to be a pastor. Uh, he's he's radical for the Lord. That's awesome. Uh, fully loves Christ. I mean, it's for, since he's been a kid, it's been mm-hmm. one of those things, like we saw it, right? Like we yeah. actually, I cannot wait till he has his first, like, Pastorate, because yep. I have video yep. oh. <laughs> uh, of him naked. Oh. He'd take off his onesie. There you go. He'd take off his onesie. And he was like preaching? And he'd walk around the house, couldn't even understand him. He'd be like, Wow. He's going to need to He's gonna need to up the wardrobe game right. a little bit. I don't know. That might work. Well, okay. 
Well, I could pass your preaching in a onesie. It's a scary place. We're going right now. You could rock a onesie. So you could rock a onesie. Before we talk about my apparel anymore, you are a counselor at Link Care yeah, Counseling hard to Center. Yeah, I, I know. Believe it or not. And what exactly is like kind of your speciality there? Yeah. So Link Care in general, again, uh, founded by Stan Linquist and Brent Linquist, okay. um, amazing men who mm-hmm. really created a, a powerful vision for uh, for ministering to pastors and missionaries. So the big thing we all do at Link Care and that I get to do at Link Care is I get to work with missionaries um, who, who are dealing with the same stuff we are day-to-day life. Yeah. Other times it can be big crises that can happen in the field. Um, you know, occasionally we'll have to deal with folks who maybe have been taken hostage and those kind of things. We have a team of like 13 clinicians and two pastors and, and we get to help rebuild, right? Missionaries and pastors in a really safe environment. We have eight and a half acres. So they stay in apartments and they're with us for months, uh, as we kind of rebuild the whole family. So it's a really cool thing to be a part of. That's the main focus of Link Care. And And how long have you been there? So I have been there since 1995. So okay. I, I, I took a break for a couple of years, um, but I started my practicum there in 1995. Um, I was a seminary student here. And so 1995, did a, an internship there, and then I was on staff for a couple of years. Um, took a couple year break, stayed really, really connected to Brent Linquist and Phil Collier, okay. yep. and then came back in, came in, back in and 2000. And so I've been there ever since. Oh, wow. So long time, long term. And folks don't leave Link Care too much. I mean, because yeah. like, it is, it's an amazing team of folks oh, that I get to be a part that's of. That's great. So you're reaching out to missionaries and pastors. And then my and... subspecialty is addiction. Okay. Right? I mean, and, and part of that's just my own journey. Um, I was able to get sober in July of 1988. Uh, and that's oh, really that's where great. God radically began to change my life, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And pretty quickly, like even in my own recovery journey, um, you know, as part of, uh, you know, groups, right? Yep. And then had the opportunity to be volunteer, a volunteer and folks, I, I realized, man, I had a knack for connecting and, yeah. and confronting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so worked early on in substance abuse recovery and then realized, you know what, I want to keep doing this. I want to do it in different ways. So I went on and got my master's so I could impact more folks. And the rest is history. Yeah, rest and is history. so what a great transition because you saw the importance of people le- living in community. Oh, my gosh. With Absolutely. transparency and vulnerability. Yeah. And, and and here we are. We're in the midst of something that none of us have ever seen before. Right. Something that's affecting a, uh, a global economic ramifications, social ramifications. Every area of life. Right. Every facet of life. This is going to go down in the history books as a time that the world kind of stood still like a global timeout because of COVID-19. Right. And so some of what I wanted to talk with you today is people are now experiencing things that they didn't experience before. Right. We even had a quick conversation being somewhat introverts that I'm right. like, I want to be around people right. and I can't be around people right now. And, and so what are some of like the, the, the potential psychological ramifications, but how can people combat those when we are required to physically distance because we were created for community? We're right. created to be around people. Relationship. And so what are some of the things that, that people can be mindful of to take care of themselves in the time of like some of this physical distancing. Yeah, I think uh, physical distancing doesn't necessarily have to mean relational distancing. Right. Right. Yeah. So actively taking those steps to reach out and, and to make connection. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and we live in a time, right? I think that technology is a blessing during this time. Right. It can be a curse. Yeah. I think it's one of the problem areas yeah. folks are dealing with too. Oh, yeah. And I just bumped this. Sorry. Get back up. This is live. This is live. This right is here. live. This Good. is how you troubleshoot in it. real time. That's it. why it's a maiden voyage. You know, you realize <laughs> so, one of the engines isn't it. working. There it is. That's real and live, folks. Right here. This was not rehearsed. I did this right, naturally. Right. This is called a Paulism, and not right? filmed. Which is why I don't have a drink, right? Because I tend to just have one of these moments, and I'm glad I got to experience it with all of you. Now, back <laughs> so, to that question. So back to the social connection. <laughs> right. Be- because we realize how much we need other people right. when all of a sudden we're mandated that we can't be around other right. people. And we can't. So you're going to, we're finding folks really, really disconnected. Yeah. Right. Disconnected during a time when we desperately would need connection. Okay. Right. So it's not just the disconnection. It's and then everything else. So I'm disconnected, but I'm worrying about people. I'm disconnected and I may have financial stress. Mm-hmm. I'm disconnected and we're running out of toilet paper or whatever right. supply. I'm disconnected and I hear all this chaos in the world and there's all this fear and I feel scared and overwhelmed. So we have all this emotional pressure right. where normally we would need to connect and talk with someone right, about right, it. Right, 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 right. Yet we feel locked up. 
So the big thing is to find the way to reach out and connect with folks. Right. Um, and whether that's we're going to hop on our computer, whether we're going to do FaceTime with people, we're going to engage in phone calls, we're going to do whatever it is that we need to do. Some connection is better than no connection. Right. Right. I would much rather sit with one of my brothers and have a cup of coffee and get real and get yeah. raw mm -hmm. um, and, and hang out for a good chunk of time. But if we're not able to do that, then what we need to do is, is take that second best thing. And that second best thing is, yeah, pick up the phone. Phone, hop on FaceTime, right. make sure we are purposefully connecting with people during this time. Yeah, I was just telling somebody the other day, uh, if you think about it, do it. Right. If you think about them, pick up that phone, yep. do whatever you Absolutely. can. Absolutely. And I was just talking to my wife the other day, I don't think any of us are going to, to take for granted when this is all lifted, um, the significance of a hug or a handshake. Right. That that's going to be radical. Right. Yeah, you're going to talk That is the, you know, I've got, you know, Jeremiah's a big guy and a big hugger, right? Yeah. And one of the early things on for me, like when I got sober, right? I never forget, like I'd got real and raw and honest at a meeting and, and I, I was getting up to walk out and it was this big biker dude, like he hugged me, right? right? Like yeah. big hug, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and for me, right, like I'd shared my worst and I felt this awesome hug, right? And so I love to hug my brothers, right? And that is the thing, right, that I'm missing so much. One of my best friends came by, yeah. right? He's like, hey, yeah. I'm in the area. And I'm like, okay, I'm like <laughs> there's no touching, right? And I thought, wow, like, this is the first time in like 30 years when I saw this dude that I didn't hug him, yeah. right? And I miss that, right? And, and, and I think we all are. We're missing connection and relationship. And, and, and I think for all of us to realize that it's normal to miss it, sure. to be sad. Sure. And, and the word that we have to do is we have to grieve it. Yeah. Like to let it be okay to be sad about it, to, yeah. to lament a bit about it, to okay. feel sorrow about it and not go, wow, there's something wrong with me. Sure. And yeah. I'm really grieving yeah. something that really, really matters. Yeah. And the flip side, conversely, is I don't think we'll take some of those things for granted right. when we come out of this. Right. Hopefully. It, right. And, and exactly, because right. we resort back to kind of our natural operating system and we forget all of the things that we're going through. But hopefully we come out of this and we go, wow, man, uh, being around people is really a gift. And I was really created for this. So here's one of the things that I want to do. Um, and I'm curious to get your insight on because being a pastor to pastor people, but I can't get to my people right now and just be able to look them in the eye or shake their hands and really see how they're doing. What are some signs that, that people should be aware of? Maybe that they're not doing so emotionally or mentally well right now and some steps that they can take if they see those. Like if that tendency to want to take a nap really isn't just wanting to take a nap, they right. just don't want to get out of bed all day. Uh, yeah, what are our warning lights? Yeah. Right, right, what right. are the lights that come on? Yeah. Right, that's it. Yeah, we've seen a big change in maybe how we function. Okay. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm super sluggish, staying in bed all day. Um, you know, I mean, this is probably the most dressed up I've been in a while. Right? It's, like, well, it's nice to not be in my pajamas, right? Right. right. Um, but, but there's the part of that, right? And, and sure, there can be some, ad, uh, it can be helpful to get dressed every day and do all mm -hmm. those things, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily concerning, right? But if really, for real, like if I feel like I'm not showering, I don't seem to care anymore. Uh, watching our mood, yeah. right? Like, am I feeling a little more snappy? Uh, am, am, am I feeling angry? Am I feeling frustrated with things that normally wouldn't frustrate me? Oh, that's good. Am I seeing some anger outbursts? Um, how am I doing with my anxiety level? Good. Right, like, am I, you know, where's my anxiety level? Am I worrying? Yeah. Um, what's the chatter like in my head? Yeah. Right. So if I have a lot of stuff that's going on in my head, and there are things to worry about right now. Well, uh, well to that point, like. How much is too much of scrolling through the news feed? Like, right. how much is that feeding into that? Right. Well, and I think that's the other side, right? We live in this amazing time, right, where we can, we have the ability to have connection with people we normally wouldn't, right? Jordan being in Biloxi would be a lot sadder if we couldn't FaceTime and yeah. do stuff and connect, right? Yeah. So we have access to all this amazing technology that's a blessing, that's going to let us connect with people, talk with people, relate with people. Mm -hmm. But then the other side of technology is we have access 24 hours a day, seven days a week to information. Right. Um, that's different versions of the exact same information that are two different extremes. And so we're watching folks what we want, why we keep pulling out and trying to get more information or checking. And I'm guilty too, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. not like, wow, I'm so evolved, I'm not doing it, right? So that's just to be honest, right? right? Yeah. Because I'll leave here and I'll go check again. What if there's some more news, <laughs> right, right. right? What did I miss? What right. I was doing what this? did I miss, right? And what it is, is we need to manage 
the amount of information that we're taking in. Okay. Oh, and that's that's good. Right. So if we're saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to check in the morning. I'll check at night. Okay. Right. I mean, kind of like I'm I'm checking my temperature twice a day. Sure. Check my temperature in the morning. I check my temperature at night. Uh, get something in place. Sure. So some established ha- boundaries. Yep. See what happened. Kind of you know overnight. If there's anything significant, okay, cool. If I need to check at night, cool. We're going to check at night because yeah. it's to to have the information. What's going on for a lot of folks is we are absolutely powerless over so many things in our life right now. Oh, and people are so aware of this right, right now. Yeah. And, and, and what it is, is we're actually aware of how powerless we really are. Mm-hmm. We have this fundamental lie that, that we have control over our lives, right? That we have control over our destiny, right? Like, you know, before the drop, right? I was looking at my 401k. I don't have a lot, but I have enough to kind of get cool. I was projecting retirement levels and kind of going, man, look at this, look at that. Well, this is what it'll be like for me 20 years from now. And actually believing I have some control over really what it's going to be like. Everything's changed. We we can't go where we want to go. We don't know what our financial future is going to be like. We don't know what... uh, is, is this the first of many viruses that are going to be like this? Right, yeah. Um, there's so many things that are outside of our control. We're overwhelmed. Yeah. And what we're desperately trying to do is to gain control over things that we don't have control over. Okay, so that immediately plunges people into a state of worry and anxiety. Right. And so that's so prevalent in society today. Like we see more commercials about it. We hear more things about it. There's more podcasts coming out about it. More preachers are preaching about it. More counselors are talking about it. That's great. People are dealing with that in real time, but how do they alleviate that? Like they feel anxious, right? So what can they do about it? So here's the Paul answer. And a lot of times the Paul answer bothers folks. I'm going to say nothing. We need to be anxious. We need to be afraid. We need to let ourselves feel it. We need to let ourselves feel this feeling that we have and not on our own, try to get rid of it. So we've got little dogs in our house, right? Um, and we've got little dogs like, and I love my Taffy, she, but, but she's dumb, right? And little dogs tend to be dumb. And we have a big dog. Paul loves animals, though. Right? Yeah, I do. I do. I really do. <laughs> kind of more than some right, people, right. right? We have right. a big dog that lives next door. Right. And so our little dogs like to go bark at the fence. Okay. Right? This dog could eat them in okay. one bite. Right. Right? And if they feel a threat, they run to the threat, these little bitty dogs. Right. Ours are the same thing. But we've got Agatha. Agatha is a little chihuahua. She's a little chihuahua who knows she's a little chihuahua. So when something scary happens, right. she immediately runs to me. She can do a one hop. She hops up into my arms. She nestles back into me. Okay. She'll go. <sighs> she takes a breath. She looks up at me. And then she'll look boldly over at this fence where the dog is. Ooh, I think I know where you're going with this. Okay. She runs to the place of safety. She doesn't act like she's not afraid. Sure. She doesn't try to do all this stuff to make herself oh, not be so afraid. Yeah. She says, I'm really, really afraid. Okay. And I need to run to my protector. Okay. I'm thinking, if my little chihuahua can figure that out, like, I can do the same thing. We need to feel what we're feeling. Yeah. Scared, overwhelmed, yep. out of control. Yeah. If there was ever a time for real to run to Jesus. Like for real to run, not I'm going to run to Jesus and I'm going to go do all this stuff sure. to kind of take care of it anyway. Sure. No, Out of absolute necessity. That I'm running to him sure. and I'm saying, wow. I need you to comfort the thing that human, that nothing can comfort. I need you to take away the fear that nothing can take away except for you to let him embrace us in the midst of that. But that means we need to feel it. Yeah. To validate the feeling. Right. And, yeah. and to let that be okay. But it's, it's not going to rule us. I can feel anxious and feel worried, but I'm not going to let it be the basis for oh, making decisions. Gosh. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to get comfort from the comforter. I'm going to take the breath. I'm going to trust and know that ultimately that I'm saved. Ultimately, this is a great opportunity to be able to spend some time with the people that hopefully matter to us most. So to remember that. Yeah, yeah. I think some things that we can do to avoid some of the frustration. Yeah, especially for kids. We yeah. need to get some routine in place. Yeah. If you've got folks that are in high school and below, yeah. we need to get some routines in place for them. Yeah, that's um, really good. Right. We've seen a huge benefit from from that, maintaining the routine, not not allowing people to get up at like 1030 or 11 right. o'clock. And, right. And, 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 and we may on the back end say, hey, there can be some grade. We are going to have some fun. Sure. Yeah, ab- absolutely. There's we, no fun right now. Right. Now, no. your, your house, right. shut, shut them down. Right. right. 
It's all right. That's right. Yeah, but to be <laughs> able, right, to say, hey, we to find that balance of s- enough structure so that they don't feel chaotic and overwhelmed. Because structure actually helps all of us, right, right. to feel a bit better. Because we know what to do. It's some predictability. So to create some uh, age-appropriate predictability for okay. kids. Okay. So here, let me throw this one out. To all of my singles that feel like they're living Groundhog Day right now, right. they're getting up, they're going to work, they're being physically distanced, they're doing their job, they're coming home, there isn't a family right there necessarily in proximity. How do they maintain some of this relational health? Good. They need to schedule times to connect with other people. Okay. They need to make dates, Yep. right? They need to schedule Zoom times Single to get and together. ready to mingle. Right. Right. Well, I, you know, it's funny. I watched some some friends from high school, right? And 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 I mean, hopefully we can hear the message, not the thing. They, I guess, they get together and drink wine together. Yeah. Right. That's their thing that they do. Yeah. yeah. Right. They're still getting together, and they're st- and they're they they posted a picture of they're all like. Uh, on on Zoom, yep. all having wine, fellowshipping, talking, connecting, yep. and and if wine's not our thing, then we still get together. Sure. And yes, Bible studies are important for that. Absolutely critical. Sure, we need to do that. But scheduling times just to get together and shoot the beans with somebody—that's good. So it would mean if it, if it's all about coffee, then we're going to get together, and I'm going to have my coffee, you're going to have your coffee, right. and we're going to sit and have a cup of coffee together while on Zoom talking and catching up. So scheduling those things. Schedule in it. Advance. Right. Every single day, especially for our singles. Intentionality. And now, I think the folks of us that have families and that feel like we need a break from our family, if we know folks who are singles in our life, then we need to reach out to them. Yeah. A lot of times what we tend to do as singles ex- is expect that they'll reach out to us. Right. If we have the blessing of being able to have a family around us that's driving us nuts yep. and we need a break from them, cool. Then we're going to reach out and call our single friends and connect with them. So really making sure, set connection points for singles. Plan it, schedule it, put it on the book, make sure every day yeah. you're purposefully connecting with someone. Yeah, Paul, that's good stuff because there's these psychological implications that we've talked about. There's the relational implications that we've talked about. There's the familial implications that we're talking about. I'm curious to know what are some other things from a counseling standpoint that you've seen emerged out of this that some of us aren't even thinking about, some of us aren't even aware about, like the sociological implications. Right. I think one piece I think that, that we're going to need to be mindful of yeah. is impact on kids. Um, that, you know, for us as adults, right, mm-hmm. we, we have that ability to have formal operations, to think, to be aware of, and all the stuff that's going on, you know, on the news, in the world, kind of the gloom and doom. Mm-hmm. We're able to think about it in a way that's really, really different than little kids. Yeah. So really making sure, I think long term, we're probably going to see some trauma, small t trauma, right. in kids that are having to deal with this. Yeah. That literally yeah. their whole world's changed. Yeah, they're not seeing right? their buddies overnight, in the, in the playground. Right. Those right, no school. playgrounds, and and now they're home. Mom and dad may be upset. They may be worried. They're hearing stuff on the news. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're hearing parents talk. Maybe they can't be around grandparents. Um, they're hearing different things about the virus. Yeah. So I think long term we may see our kids being impacted. So I think as parents now, if we can make sure That's good. Um, we start to develop some, re- again, everything's all about age appropriate. Right. You can have a more direct conversation with a high schooler. Um, with a high schooler, we can be a little more factual. We yeah. can be a little more direct. Yeah. The thing that we need to do with our high schoolers, though, as adults, is we need to have empathy. Right. That they're going to come in and in the end of their world is going to be that they don't get to go do this thing. Yeah, well, but that's but that's huge. Like I'm thinking about high school seniors, right? And their high school commencements right. aren't going to happen, and right. that's real, right? Like, like that's something, as you said before, that's something to mourn, to right. to, to be grieve. sad about, right? They maybe it's not going to be a dance, maybe yeah. it's not going to be this. They can't go to movies, they yeah. can't do all this stuff. I think it'd be easy for us as adults to go, okay, but the real deal is. Most people, sorry, kids in high school, you don't marry your high school sweetheart, yeah. right? Like you're not going to, yeah, the, the person you go to senior prom with, you may never see him again after <laughs> senior prom, right? That that right. that we'll look at it as adults and go, yeah, 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 but you're going to have lots of great experiences. Yeah. But they've been building for these experiences. So if yeah. we can have a lot of empathy. That's good. Yeah, to let them grieve what they need to grieve, yeah. to let them be sad about the thing that they need to be sad about. We don't need to teach them the lesson right now. No, no. I- 
And that's so good. Simply provide a safe place to listen. I found one of the most beneficial thing with my boys is simply a check-in to ask, how you doing? Right. And, then and just, just let them yeah. talk. Yeah. Let them talk and yeah. not try to correct any sort of skewed thinking or whatever the issue is, how minuscule it might be. Like, boy, you're not going off to work and you're not doing all these things. Right. Not to minimize what they're feeling. Okay. So that's awesome. Parents need to be age appropriate in connecting with and their so kids. And so we start looking at littles. Yep. Um, we need to find a way with younger kids to be truthful but not terrifying. Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay. We can't say, hey, listen, nothing bad's going to happen. We're protected and we're safe and knowing that you love is going to get sick. We can't say that. Right. Because if we say that and something happens, that can create some damage. We need to not terrify them. Right. right? We, not, we, we need to not give them so much information that it overwhelms them. So really finding a way to talk with our kids about, hey, this is a time that we need to be safe. This is a, So all the stuff that we're doing right now is the same reason we look both ways when we cross the street. Oh, okay. Right? You know, all the things that we have you do while we put on our safety belts or while we strap you in when we're little, these are things that we're doing to be safe. We don't need to be afraid right now, but we need to be safe right now. That's good. We don't need to be afraid. We need to be wise. Yeah. Or if we are scared, we need to be brave. So really finding a way, That's right? That's good to, stuff. So if we spin language for them, right? right, Spin language, let them know that we love them and that we're doing our very best to make sure. them be safe, that we're doing things in our country right now to be safe um, so that we can make the sickness go away because it's a sickness that's spreading. Yeah. And they're going to ask, well, will we get it? We'll say, well, we don't know. We don't know. But that's why we're doing, th- we're doing things to make sure that we don't. But if we do, and again, mm-hmm. factual, if we do, we can go to a doctor we can do everything that we need to do. Right. I'll do everything that we need to take care of you. Right. We love you very, very much. So making sure that when we're answering questions, right, truthful but not terrifying. Right, and not digging too deep. What I hear you saying is is keeping it simple yep. but keeping it honest. Yep, and remembering that we're talking to little kids Sure. and, and really staying away from metaphors, right? Like a right. lot of times one of the most common ones that we'll do when someone passes away and little kid asks what's going on, we'll say they're asleep. Right. Okay. Right. So what that kid thinks, because they, they, they operate concretely. Right. Then you're going to tell them. So I'm going to say, you know, grandpa's asleep in this box now at the funeral. And now I'm going to tell you, now go to sleep. Yeah. Well, they're like, no, no, I don't want to go to sleep. Right. And I don't want to be in a box. Right. 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 And and so for us to make sure avoiding the euphemisms. That's great. Right. To be able, again, that truthful, but not terrifying. Okay. So in all the serious counseling stuff that we've been able to cover, and this is gold, like people, I hope that we're really taking this to heart. These are some really great handles as we're moving through. I'm I'm doing a series right now, Uncharted, Navigating Faith in Uncertain Times, because we haven't been this way before. This this is all all new. What is something fun that you've discovered either about yourself or within your family during this time? Like for us, I hate board games. I hate board games, but I'll play a card game. We picked up some great card games. And as a 44-year-old man, my boys have introduced me to TikTok. Be careful what you're watching, but it's hilarious. <laughs> right. There's some hilarious stuff. And so what's something fun that you guys have just discovered during right. this? And I think that that's distancing? it, right? It's, yeah, and, and we, like, we're a pretty goofy family. Yeah. Right? You're so, watching Tiger King, aren't you? Right. Well, yeah, not yet. Well, yeah, that's my next <laughs> one, right? But you're binging right. something else. That's it, right? We just, yeah, well, yeah, mine was Hunters, right? Oh. Which is kind of dark and foreboding, <laughs> right. right? And so, right. But, but we are trying to make sure that we're watching, like, light stuff, making sure we're laughing together hanging out. Julie and I, right. um, we, we, we had an extra Xbox 360 right. that had gotten stored away. Right. And so I got it You're down. You're straight up gaming now. Right. So Julie and I, so uh-huh. we had great plans to have a gaming weekend. Okay. Uh, Julie works for Fresno Unified. And again, we have a lot of unsung heroes out there. That we, Like you said something earlier, hey, if I'm thinking of something. So I've been really trying, like if I think, if I'm grateful for something, doing that quick post on Facebook. Oh, right, yeah. like you know, I thank oh, the truckers good. this weekend, right? Because I was thinking, like, like food gets to us, right? And we're thanking our doctors and our first responders, and amen, we need to thank them. Yes, but we need to yes. thank our truckers, we need to thank our janitors, we need to thank the people that are working at the grocery stores. Yep. And for folks in Fresno Unified, you need to thank the folks that are working at Fresno Unified, still doing things to make sure oh, that's good. when school yep. comes online. So Julie's part of their tech team, yeah, and so she spent the entire weekend like resetting. 
um, their pads, right? The, the their their no Xbox pads, for you, right? Though. No Xbox for me, <laughs> right? Right. But so we're doing stuff, and I think that's the thing is to make sure that we're laughing, that we're yeah. having a good time, that we don't take this all too serious. That's so important that you're that you're like putting some some weight behind this is because I think people can get it. It's a serious time. Yeah. We gotta be serious about everything, and then they feel bad. It's like going to a funeral and laughing about something right. or a good memory about that individual. Like that's not bad like it's okay to find some some fun and to enjoy life still in the midst of this yeah there's a reality kind of out there looming but if 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 we can't take ourselves a little if we if we take ourselves too too seriously like that can be just mentally draining right because we need to laugh we need to connect we need to have fun we need to celebrate (laughs) in the midst of all this stuff that's going on right yeah um and and find in the way right whatever it is going to be for us to to relax to have purposeful connection with other people um to to really be able to use this time too i think the thing for me right i think that popped up is like this would be a time like in our life where we have moments we all have them where all of a sudden we can see stuff clear, right? So my parents were divorced real young. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a longer story about why my dad and I didn't weren't connected when I was a kid. But, right. Um, so we had some connection, and it didn't go well like in 14, 15. And so the real deal is we probably had like a 20-plus year gap. We didn't even communicate, and, um, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Facebook came along. It allowed me to connect with my half-brothers. Yeah. So we start making this connection. It's about it's probably about eight or nine years ago. and. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, I got a phone call from my uh, my brother Jeff, and my dad had had a, a pretty serious stroke. Okay. And they didn't think he was going to make it. And I remember that night, and I was out praying, and, and I felt like God like kind of checked me. Mm-hmm. Right? He said, so what are you going to do now? Like, what are you going to do now? Like, are you going to let yourself stay in your self-righteousness and be angry mm. and not reach out and not <laughs> forgive and not take a step? He said, or are you going to listen to me now? Um, and I made a choice. Because what God always says is reach out. Yeah. What God is always going to tell us is to forgive. Yeah. What God's always going to tell us to do is to try to restore that relationship. Oh, that's good. And he, and, and he said to me, I'm telling you, you need to try to restore the relationship. And so I wrote a letter that I sent to my brother, and my brother read it to my dad. And he was coming out of the stroke piece, and he sent a picture of him saluting. And, and, and really from that point forward, we began to rebuild our relationship yeah. and to have a connection. And, and, and I've thought about it. this is that time kind of globally. Yeah, no, oh, right? absolutely. We, we, we really don't know yet in the, like, who we're going to lose. And, and, and we're all afraid we may lose somebody. Um, we don't ever get a chance to have that last conversation with someone, right, yeah. if it's too late. Yeah. Um, my mom passed away in November, right? And, and like, I never get to talk to her again, yeah. right? Um, but she and I, in that three months while she was sick, were able to have some amazing conversations right. to go deep. So my child, I think in this time, right, the, the burden for me, like, yeah, there's all the practical stuff that we need to do. Yeah, make sure we're connecting, communicate with the spouse, keep short accounts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to really challenge folks, that person in your life that you don't want to forgive, that person in your life that's hurt you, mm. like this next 30 days, I mean, from a spiritual perspective, maybe you take time to pray for them every day. Yeah. The other thing I would say is like really to maybe this is the time to reach out. Yeah, yeah. That this would be the time to reach out to the person that's hurt you. Yeah. This would be the time to reach out that's to good. the distant oh, person yeah. in the relationship where there's bitterness and for, for uh, you know, that thing that they did to you 10 years ago and right. you said, I'm never going to talk to him again. You realize there's bigger issues now. Like, like for let real. That yeah. To be able to say, let oh. this be the time yeah. that when we get to the other side of this, not just that our garages are cleaned out, yeah. but that our relationships are cleaned out. <laughs> Yeah. Right? That we oh, have good. connection with people. We, we, we have active relationship. We get rid of this. We don't have the people on that list anymore. Yeah. Right? That, you know what, I just don't go there. Yeah. And right? I just don't communicate. Hey, well, they know what they did. That, and, and we go first. Yeah. That's right? As good. believers. Right? Jesus went first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And so we get to go first and try to reach out. Well, and some of the, some of the language that we've adopted uh, around the church and around the office is, is with every um, – um, with every sort of opposition, there's opportunity. Right. So in all the opposition, there's opportunity. Right. And so we just have to be able to see what that is because we get introspective. Paul, I just want to let you know that this has been this has been incredibly, nice. I just want to say, beneficial uh, for me. 
Thank you. It's been great to hear your heart, your wisdom, your insight about what you have seen. Give some practical handles to things, the worry, the anxiety that folks are dealing with, and also all you know the permission to have some fun right. and, and, the, and the and the and the permission to let some things go and to clear accounts. I love that what you said as um, as we're clearing out our garages, you know, uh, clear out some of those relationships Absolutely. and make them better than they were. Which means Julie's going to tell me I need to clean up the garage. She when is. I get home. Right, yeah. right. I was going to say now yeah. your now yeah. your chore list just got that much longer, <laughs> and you can't say you have other places to go. I'll say I'm working on forgiving people, as oh, the Lord would call me. That's good. And and, and she's and she's going to go. You know what? Uh, you can be introspective while you're cleaning that's out the right. garage because, and lock me you know, in there. There you go. And there you go. Paul Paul Maver George Link Care Counseling Center here in Fresno, California. Thanks again for just spending some time. And I think we have got. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually appeal to my comms guy here, there's going to be a website where people can submit potential questions. What's comment, that? Comment on the YouTube. Oh, comment on the YouTube comment section down there. If there's topics and things you'd like for me to be talking about in the weeks and the months ahead, but for our maiden voyage, I think this was really cool. Awesome. Thanks because for we want to me. make sure that this is something that, that, people who are watching and listening can do something with. And so I appreciate you taking the time out. And you know what? We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.